Well, hi there. Good evening, everyone. Mark Travis Sony here at Saturn Magic, ready for live up on what's new in Magic this week. So we're going to do um, our usual look over what's been new on the market in the past week, and also our main feature item for this week is the item that we're releasing tomorrow uh, out onto the market, and that's indexed by Mirror Miraculous. So we'll get into that in a little bit more detail early, uh, in a little while. But a couple of quick stock updates. Quiver Plus has been out of stock for a couple of weeks now and uh, Flight by Steve Thompson, the ring flight, has been out of stock for quite a while. We're hopefully expecting both of those back in stock tomorrow. We haven't actually got them uh, set for sale on the website at the moment, but if you've been waiting for those, they will hopefully be have their stock, taste, stock status updated tomorrow morning, assuming all goes well with the delivery. So, uh, yep, that's um, Flight and Quiver Plus. If not, should be Tuesday at the at the very very latest. Also, another item which we kind of got back into stock by default, and that is uh, we've only got four left. So I've got them here. Uh, only got four left. That's the Celebrity Presage Limited Edition copies. Uh, the reason why we've got four left, uh, you may or may not have heard that there was a printing problem with them, and the books had to be recalled, and um, what one of the pages was printed wrong by the actual printer and uh, so the books were recalled and this that and the other so we have to have new books sent to us and um, we, we ended up with four more than we anticipated so uh, we've got four of the celebrity presage limited edition books left available for sale so if you missed out on those when they were for sale as i said there's just four left on the shelf over there that we uh, have now got in stock ready to ship so good evening to everyone let's have a look down and see if we've got any gosh we've got lots of hellos Let's get the uh, hi, 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 everyone the evening. Oh, Darren. Oh, Darren's on. Uh, Darren's uh, been... Um, it, it might be lucky for the price drop later because Darren, I think, has maybe spent his budget uh, just while I was preparing the live tonight. A couple of orders from Darren popped in, so I hope he hasn't blown his budget ready for the price drop. But a uh, nice little price drop tonight, actually, so watch out for that. That's the reverse auction when we take an item down from full price to whatever you guys want to pay for it. Uh, Michael's on there as normal. Uh, Michael, there's some new kids magic this week. You didn't ask the question, but there is some. Uh, actually, I remember you did ask the question in the week, but I'm briefly going to mention it anyway. Uh, right, where are we? Evening, evening. Gwillem's on there. Hi, Gwillem. Uh, I'm not... Uh, <laughs> he's just pumped it in there, any new kids magic. If I don't mention your name, uh, I'm not like ignoring you or picking on you. It's just we want to get on. I'm not here. Okay, I'm here to say hi to everyone, but I'll say hi as a hi to you all. And let's have a look over there. Uh, and again, now, you know, Ed over on YouTube there, he's got another night off, so he's here. Ed always seems to watch, always watches us on catch up, so it's good to see him here on a live every now and then. He's got a night, night off, so it's good to see you guys all here. So uh, what are we going to talk about first? Right, let's talk about Index then. That was the main feature item that I said I wanted to talk to you about this evening. And if we jump to the website view, uh, here it is. There's the graphic for indexed. It's $35.99. Let's show you the trailer. We'll have sound on this one so you can watch it it's, and see what it's all about. Well, hi there. My name is Mark Traversoni from Sat Magic, and I'm so excited to present to you Indexed from Mirror Miraculous. It's the world's most compact, versatile, and accessible full 52 card index built into a single deck of playing cards. Index solves the problems of so many existing indexes. A lot of them require multiple pockets, special clothing requirements, magician's choice, a quiver K. With Index, you literally have access to all 52 playing cards, giving your spectator a totally free choice. And to set up, all you need to do is pop this deck into your pocket. So how does Index look in performance? Well, it looks exactly like you're going to see right now. Please name any playing card that you like. Nine of Hearts. The Nine of Hearts. Out of all 52 cards in the deck, can you name the Nine of Hearts? Yes. Well, there it is. The Nine of Hearts. Literally any named card at your fingertips in a few seconds. But that's not all. Index is so versatile, not only can you produce a full flat card, you can also produce a Mercury card folding cards as well. Please name another playing card for me. Two of spades. Two 
to a spade as well. Uh, within seconds you can access that card <coughs> to a spade. Hi Nicola. Hi, how are I'm, you? Oh, I'm great. I want to show you something absolutely oh, amazing here. Look. I've got a deck of playing cards that are a little bit unusual, they're actually invisible. Oh, crikey. Okay. You have them there, take them out of the box. Okay. Um, I shall have the box back. Thank there you. There we go. Now, now you shuffle them up. Okay. Now, actually, rather than just shuffle into a random card, pick out any card you want. If you could choose any card, but you, just imagine you can see all the faces there, all the okay. colours and everything. What card are you going to pick out of all of those invisible cards? Can I tell you? Yeah. Okay. Three of hearts. Three of hearts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'll take the three out. Okay. Okay, give the rest to me. Now what I want you to do is to fold that card in half. Okay. And fold it in half again. Okay. And so you've got it there, little package. Yep. Just toss it into the air towards the ceiling. I'll catch it on the way down. Ooh. Impressive. And that's one card. How did you do that? So what you decide to do with your spectator's card when you have access to it is completely up to you. There are a multitude of mystery boxes on the market. You can pluck it from the air, from your pocket, have it inside a block of ice. It literally is open to your imagination. Index really is that versatile tool that gives access to all 52 cards at your fingertips. Okay, so there we have it. There's the trailer for Indexed. Let me just turn the... Uh, oh, okay, that's gone off already. Okay, so that was the trailer for Indexed. And that just reminded me, actually, because I saw Gordon's on tonight. And Gordon was in the shop on Friday. And uh, he was lucky enough to be able to take his away with him, even though the tutorial was only just made live, uh, I think, yesterday evening, possibly. And I think he's managed to um, access the tutorial and had a look at it because he's already sent me a picture with a little idea that he came up with indexed and he's loving it. So uh, Steve, I don't know if Steve's on tonight, I don't know if I've seen him, but Steve is also uh, liking indexed as well. So um, <clears throat> the Lance is saying what was the card in phone effect shown? That is David Stone's cell and I've got mine, that was a picture of mine. Let me just grab it, here we go. Uh, what I like to do when I'm, when I'm at a gig, I've got my old, <laughs> had one of these years ago, old Sony Ericsson uh, slidey phone thing uh, from years ago. David Stone's cell works with the old style phones that have uh, a battery compartment on the back so you can slide the, the back off them. And that's what, the, that's what it looks like when it's unactivated, if you know what I mean. So that's what they see at the end after the card comes out just looks like the barcode and manufacturer's uh, details on the back of the phone. I absolutely love this effect. You get both, I think, you, yeah, you do get both. I think you get a red and a black and a blue gimmick in each pack. And I'm just uh, activating that, right. So, and as you saw on the, the trailer there, uh, it looks like uh, a red bicycle card. And then when you toss, toss it out, the card disappears and you've, you've got the card. So that's David Stone's cell. You might wonder what I'm doing carrying around the oldest mobile phone in the world. Uh, well, probably not the oldest, but you know what I mean. I like to have that gag that when I walk up to people, they've got their phones out, and I say, oh, I still use one of these. Uh, can't be bothered with all this instant messaging and things. Can I just take a picture of you guys? Resolution's not great. There we go. And uh, I can put that down on the table or give it someone to put in their pocket, make the card um, you know, disappear that uh, they've picked, and then at the end, you can retrieve the phone, pull it out, and the card was in the phone. So it's a great little effect. Uh, one I've been doing for absolutely ages, because David Stone's cell has been out for quite a while. So it's worth checking that out, if you've not heard of it, actually. Uh, I also love the... Sorry for reaching out of shot, but just reaching into my close-up case. also love the In Case of Emergency uh, by uh, Adam Wilbur. That's my other favourite one. Uh, I like doing... I'm, I'm kind of a one that, rather than... Excuse me, I always used to do the same effect from table to table and, and didn't thought everyone's getting the same set. But I'm finding now that gigs that I'm doing don't tend to be like 10 people sat at a table waiting for you to perform. So, um, and people tend to drift around between tables or, you know, not quite follow you, but they see you more than once. Whereas going back years or, you know, you know what I mean, uh, it was a pretty set format. So you could do the same format on each table. 
and um, I found out that I can basically still do the same trick but it's a different ending so did you see that trick where the card ended up in his phone or did you see that trick where the card ended up inside the fire alarm pull thing uh, when they're talking they think it's two different tricks but it is essentially the same one so I end up carrying around uh, like a couple of variations of, of basically the same trick so it uh, one helps with pocket space and things uh, and also the number of effects that um, uh, how can I say, the, the ones that you get really slick in your repertoire, when a new mystery box comes out for instance, I always look at it and think, hey that's great, I can use that without adapting anything, it's just a different reveal at the end. Anyway, we're talking about indexed, so sorry, easy to get sidetracked when someone asks a question. Let me just get the website back to where we are. So indexed has actually been the most successful pre-sale product that we've ever had here at Saturn Magic. And that is absolutely amazing. So if you've ordered it already, thank you very much. We actually sold out of all the stock that we made um, for the launch. And we have nearly sold all the stock that we've got for Blackpool. Uh, we're assuming that Blackpool is going to go ahead, just while I mention that. I think the way, uh, currently anyway, the way Boris is talking is that we just have to kind of get on with things now. So we are, fingers crossed, got a 90% plus hopeful that Blackpool is going to go ahead uh, as it should be. And I've seen some messages coming out from the Blackpool Magic Club as well about the Blackpool Magic Convention, so they're, they're obviously still ploughing ahead as if it's going ahead as well, so fingers crossed we'll all be good for that. Okay, so thanks for the orders, tremendous response. Uh, we've got only a few left, um, we've got more in production, so if the website does say sold out or does say pre-order with a forward date, if you've ordered already while well, it says uh, being shipped tomorrow then your order safe if not then it will be shipped out as soon as possible as soon as we get more stock available uh, but no great response so what is indexed indexed is a utility tool as it showed in the trailer there uh, this is my one uh, i've got mine in a bicycle seconds box if you order indexed you get it in a nice red rider back box because it's a brand new deck of cards that we supply in the index for you the revolutionary thing about indexed is that all 52 cards are indexed inside the card box and uh, I'm not aware of another card index that has all 52 cards indexed uh, in there that you can retrieve within you know a few seconds and uh, that, that's what's so kind of revolutionary about this. It can be put in any pocket you like but there's got to be a reasonable amount of pocket space because you've got to get your hand in there to be able to you know feel the deck. Uh, so a loose fitting pair of trousers, I like to have mine in my back pocket and my jacket covers it so it can just poke up out my, uh, out my uh, back pocket and I can access it. In the trailer, if you watch the trailer back you'll see that I'm stood there like this and so my hand isn't actually going into my pocket because the deck is actually sitting on top of my wallet in the back pocket so it's kind of half in my pocket the deck with half of the deck sticking out. So if you have it in your back pocket, you're not actually having to reach into a pocket to actually retrieve the card. So my other hand is just like there, just for mirroring purposes really, because if I was stood there just with one arm like this while I was asking for a card, that they might be wondering what that arm's doing there. But you know, if you think about it, if, you just, if you've been talking to people like this, and you just sort of go back and say, you name a card, you name a card, you, you know, you gesture with your hands and put them back there a few times, it's quite natural that your hands there. It hasn't gone anywhere. You know, your hands are just naturally where they would be on your hips, which is why I like using it in my back pocket. You're not limited to your back pocket. It can go in a, a, a normal jacket pocket. If you wear a suit jacket, it can go in the, the side pocket, no problem. If you're wearing a hoodie top, it can go inside the hoodie jacket. It's best in pockets, like I'm wearing jeans at the moment, and then, you know, they're quite tight, so it's not ideal. Well, it's, I would say it's it's possible, but I would say it's certainly not ideal uh, to do it in jeans unless they're loose fitting. Uh, you can have it on an inside jacket pocket, but uh, someone asked that question before, can it go on the inside jacket pocket? But it, your hand has got to go into that pocket to kind of get it. Whereas if you've got a side pocket that your hands can just rest in casually, or um, if, you go, if you go into, the, the side jacket pocket isn't kind of a place where you'd naturally rest your hands, but I'll mention something about the side jacket pocket which makes the, the use there uh, particularly good in a moment. But I find the back pocket myself absolutely brilliant. Uh, if um, you've got a wallet in your back pocket, you can have it upright or sideways and sit the deck on top. 
and as long as your trouser isn't reasonably, uh, you know, depends how much room you've got in there, but you can position your your deck there so it's sticking up enough to be able to use it. So index gives you access to all 52 playing cards. If someone, if you wanted a joker, then just stick a joker in your pocket loose, and obviously you can go in there and get that if someone was being a bit funny and asked for a joker. But you know, we said all 52 playing cards, uh, which are the 52 normal cards. Uh, you can. Um, so you've got the 52 cards in the box, uh, that's how it comes. We show you how to set it up in two different ways, one, one to set it up for flat cards and the other to set it up for mercury card folded cards. So now you see these cards aren't actually mercury card folded uh, but they're all pre-scored and folded and unfolded a couple of times so that they're really, not exactly as floppy as anything but what it means is, is that you retrieve the card flat from the index but because it's been scored and folded the card just literally folds in no time in your hand so it, it comes when the card is produced it's produ produced mercury card folded uh, and you're not having to actually uh, when cards are pre-scored normally in the routine you're having to actually physically fold the card break the back of the card if that makes sense down the crease lines so with this you're retrieving the card and as soon as you're retrieving it, it virtually starts to fold itself because of the well creased uh, folds. Uh, if you've ever folded a playing card um, that's been scored, you'll know they fold up incredibly easy back into shape once you've folded them up uh, once before. So you can produce the mercury card folded or, uh, or flat, which opens up a world of possibilities to produce it from any of the mystery boxes as I've mentioned. You can have the card flat appear wherever you want. I mentioned the side pocket actually, we don't mention this on the trailer, but it is one of the routine ideas that we show on the on the trailer. Uh, and actually we're going to get that video out in the week so everyone can see that, because you've seen the performance of me reaching up in the air and grabbing the card uh, from the air, the name card. Uh, there's also a presentation which I really love, where you give someone a deck of cards, ask them to shuffle it, so they can freely shuffle the deck of cards, you take the deck back, you have a spread through and you, you're, you're looking through and you say I just need a few seconds to uh, like memorise all these cards. You've shuffled them into an order. There's a, a thing I've heard that no deck of cards, I'm going to have to look this up for real actually, but I've been told that no deck of cards has ever been shuffled into the same shuffle twice, which seems a little bit hard to believe. You'd think maybe it has, but no, apparently they reckon that, that that's true. Uh, but I shall have to Google it just to find out if it is. So they shuffle the cards, it's into a one, you know, once ever mix. Uh, let me just memorise it. <coughs> right, I think I've got it. I've memorised the deck. You then put the deck into your side jacket pocket. And I say a side jacket pocket then because there's plenty of room, a side jacket pocket. You can do it in a hoodie pocket because again there's plenty of room in a hoodie type pocket. So any pocket that's got a good bit of room. You could do it in your back pocket if you've got like uh, baggy jeans with big pockets then uh, you could do it into there as well. Uh, but I find my jacket pocket when I'm out at a gig is a great one to do it in. So I've memorised the deck, I've dropped the deck uh, cards uh, into my pocket and then I go through the process of having them select a card. Now when I say the process of having them select a card, there is no equivocate with indexed. You can have any card that you like. So there's no forcing, no magician's choice, no equivocate, whatever you want to call it. It's a completely free choice of playing card. Now. We do recommend on the tutorial that while you're getting used to indexed, then maybe you do want to use a little bit of equivocate just to make it just because when you you're new with an index, you think right where's because you've got to think like where the card is, the one that you want to retrieve with any index and what position it's in. So if you want to make your life easy, then you could stick to red or black. Or well, the way it comes actually, you could equivocate to a red card or a black card. So if you said there's red cards and black cards, whichever you choose is what we'll use, you've got a very quick and easy way to get to a red or a black card and then you just use equivocate on the next uh, step. Uh, where you can say, okay, if they said black, you can say we've got spades and clubs, uh, hand one to me. And if they handed me the spades, for instance, I'd say, well, which spade do you want me to take out? And they'd say the seven of spades, and you go right. There's the seven of spades. Uh, we'll have all the, the rest. So get the seven of spades, fold it up, or do it, and then we can do the uh, catch in the air if that's the routine that we wanted to do. So uh, you can just equivocate them down to one of the reds or one of the black suits when you first start, and that makes life very very easy um, for uh, for learning the effect. 
It doesn't take long to learn. Mark Infinity in the shop here has been out gigging it this weekend. He says it's taken him a couple of days just to familiarise himself with it, get used to it. Um, not that he's practised for a full two days with it, but what he means is every now and then just picking it up, having a play with it, and he got used to it and has been out gigging it this weekend and he's only been uh, doing it for a couple of days, which uh, is uh, quite a testament really to, um, uh, to how easy he actually picked it up. And um, the, the reason why he picked it up actually is that we did the filming on Thursday for the trailer and it was only after he'd watched the trailer and saw me doing it and was just like blown away with how you know easy I was doing it. He said, I'm going to try this. So of course he took one home on Friday and uh, he's been out using it this weekend. So uh, absolutely, sorry Thursday he took one home. He had Friday and has been out gigging it, uh, gigging it this weekend. So, uh, what I was going to tell you about indexed, it comes set up ready to go. There is a when you take it out of the box, there's a tutorial card sort of wrapped at the top of the deck, and it says, Please do not take your index out of the box until we've watched the tutorial because you can disturb the cards in the index if you just like, pull everything out willy nilly. Uh, but we do show you how to reset it really quickly. But we've taken the trouble to actually set everything up ready for you because I know there's nothing worse when you get a trick and you've got to like watch the tutorial and it says, do this, do that, and set this up, and set that up, and um, but we've done it all for you, so it's ready to go when it comes out of the box. Okay, um, just looking to see if we've got any questions while I'm rabbiting away. So I'm trying to cover everything, but uh, yeah, Gordon said index index good. Once you've had a play, it's easy to select the desired card. Yeah, brilliant. And Paul saying index does look impressive. Same 52 factorial. Yeah, I'm not too sure what the uh, number of 52 factorials is on a deck of playing cards, but it is quite a lot. Um, yeah, we're going to cover effing card in a little while, Paul, so we'll talk about that shortly as well. Uh, but anyway, back to uh, indexed. So it comes ready to go. You've got Mercury cards, flat cards. What else can I say? Um, I think I've made. Oh, there's uh, something that we didn't mention in the ad copy actually. You can retrieve two cards from the index without um, disturbing things too much. You know, it kind of makes sense if you get it, in that you could retrieve, say, the Three of Hearts, and then you could also retrieve any other card from the, the index that you wanted. If you then try and do a third or a fourth card, it may possibly work, but there's a chance that it may not, and you'd have to use a little bit of uh, mental gymnastics let's say to uh, to figure that out so I would say two cards certainly is is doable by anybody if you want to start doing three cards or more then uh, you're going to have to get very familiar and be able to be quite quick at uh, working things out but two cards is beginner level uh, or my level <laughs> certainly to be able to do it uh, quickly and efficiently so uh, yeah you can actually do two cards from the index not just one uh, right so that's indexed, it's out tomorrow, so very low stock. So if you haven't ordered it yet and you're on the fence, then I suggest uh, you, you get on this evening, order it. Uh, and uh, if we do sell out, then we'll be restocking as quickly as we can uh, <coughs> to, uh, to supply more. Okay, so let's see. We've got the effing card was mentioned there, so we may come on to that one. Oh, Roy's got a question, what memory works required? Uh, well, Roy, there's not. It depends which way you set indexed up. Now, it's supplied in the way that I supply it, and uh, like the way Mirror showed it to us originally, was that it just went ace to king. So, if you can count ace to king, then you pretty much and, and you know an order of suits, clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds, for instance. Then you could just have ace to king, clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. So that that's as much memory work is kind of needed to know where any particular card will be. I set it up slightly differently to that because um, I, I have a bit of problem with my brain being able to um, work that kind of thing out, and I've set mine up so that and the one uh, the way it comes so that you get ace through to king in reds and ace through to king in black because I just found that easier for me to remember. Uh, but we explained on the tutorial that um, you can change the cards around to you know whatever order you want. Once you see 
the way the, if you call it a stack works or the way it's laid out, you can change uh, the kind of piles around so that the cards can come in whatever order you find easier to remember. Okay, so uh, no, very, very easy. Okie dokie. I oh, see Steve's on. <coughs> I wasn't too sure if you were there really, Steve. He says it's a little bit late. Steve uh, had a look at Index in the week as well when he was in the shop. I mentioned that earlier, uh, as well as Gordon. Uh, Roy's saying, is it chased? It can be any order that you want. As I say, I chose to go for just reds and blacks, uh, with hearts being... It's a bit hard to explain unless you've actually got it, but you can have it in any order that you want. You can have it reds, blacks, chased, any order. You can even put a memorised deck into... Uh, in fact, we mention it as a bonus, um, any card at any number. Uh, what you can do with Index, you can actually count cards as well as locate cards. So if you wanted... Uh, so, say you've got a memorised deck in there and it's all in memorised deck order and you know that the card named and the number named means that you need to move 12 cards from the bottom of the deck to the top of the deck. You can count 12 cards and displace them. Uh, so in other words, you can remove 12 cards from the box, put them underneath the box, and when you bring the box out with the cards underneath, you kind of cradle them and appear to be tipping them all out of the box, but you've displaced them so they're like underneath if you know what I mean. So it looks like they're all coming out of the box and then you've got any card at any number if you've used it with a stacked deck. Certainly beyond my capabilities because there's no way that, again my brain the way it works it just won't do memorised deck work but if you do do memorised deck you can do any card at any number with index which is a pretty cool way of using it or even if you just wanted to count a specific number of cards for an effect that you were doing. Um, then uh, that's it. Oh, and I didn't explain the uh, pocket effect properly, actually. Um, so I was saying someone shuffles the deck, you memorise the deck, put it in your pocket, they name a card, you can reach in, uh, you've obviously got your index in there as well as that deck that you've just put in, and you can say the card that you chose, say the Seven of Spades, is... Uh, doo -doo -doo, uh, yeah, it was there. And you can kind of, uh, you want to make a bit of noise as if you, well, you know, like flicking through the cards and you go, yeah, it should be about there and you can pull out their uh, chosen card. So that's the card from pocket uh, effect from a shuffled deck. So it can give you the, the appearance that you've memorised uh, every card in the deck and you were able to reach in, flick through and locate their card and the one card that you pulled out of the pocket uh, was actually their chosen card. So you get the card from the air, the card in pocket, I'm going to give you a few other ideas, um, uh, like the mystery boxes and things as well, just to get you going. Okay. Uh, it says, what do we think of the new 1914 wallet? That's the Orphic wallet, which again, we'll cover that uh, very, very shortly. Uh, who was in with the, was it Graham that was in with the effing card, or was it Ed that was asking about that? But, um, no, so the um, effing card, let's just find that one on the website. Actually, let's go to the website view and have a look. Uh, Las Vegas Gambling Guide's been doing very well. So thank you for your orders for that one. And the no credit and index we've just mentioned. Uh, there's the this one here. Now the shipment's been delayed on this one unfortunately so it's going to arrive on Tuesday not on tomorrow Monday so that's why the date's moved by one day if you've pre-ordered and um, I'll talk over this while it's playing just turn that off so I can talk over it while it's playing so the uh, for one I don't know why he's called it that title uh, but uh, you know, maybe it was just to kind of grab people's attention. I don't think it was really needed. But anyway, so we've got the title of the card. But what's the effect? You've got the playing box, uh, playing card box on the table. It wants you to think of a playing card. The person um, names that playing card. He turns it round, and in that case, it was the three of clubs. Um, he then removes the card from the back of the box says he's going to sign it for you and date it or whatever. And he gives you the three of clubs. So that's about that's about it. No forces, no I didn't see what that said actually, but it is a free choice. Here he is doing it again. Now 
a bit like with indexed actually, because um, rather than someone just blurting out a card, I think it's probably better that you do go through the motions of do you want red or black, do you want uh, clubs, hearts, whatever, uh, spot cards, picture cards, because it involves more people, it's a little bit more entertaining. It also makes the trick last a little bit longer if you're at a gig, <laughs> because uh, you know if you do a trick in 20, if you want a quick 20 second trick, then yeah, it'll certainly do that, and you can move immediately on to something else. Now, we will um, just wait and see what he does after this one, so there he is signing the card again. Now, it is a great business card giveaway. You can use your own business cards if they've got white backs, and you can just draw a black border and the, the um, to have refills as such. You get 10 if you call it refills with it <coughs> before you start having to make your own so he's done it on the back of a business card uh, great little way to give away a business card if you haven't got business cards that's what I'll mention in a moment actually uh, good for zoom oh, brilliant for zoom actually and not that it's not good for live but certainly uh, fantastic for zoom and uh, any other social media type videos and is that the uh, is that the end? There it is. So it's forty three forty eight, which isn't bad actually, considering the gimmick and the work that's gone into making it. So, um, so not a bad price. The let me just get that back to the home page. So I'm ready to move on. So yeah, I mentioned during that clip there about pulling the business card out. If you gig and you've got business cards and they've got white backs and you can uh, just draw the black box round and prepare the card uh, ready to give it away then yes it is a nice little giveaway of a business card I was thinking about this and I thought well if you think about the magic market most people that are buying magic nowadays aren't actually out there gigging and giving away business cards probably out of every hundred magicians there's probably only five ten percent that are actually out there gigging every week so you're not going to go down the pub with um, uh, this card trick, <laughs> this effing card trick, to um, do it for your mates and say, oh, let me take it out and I'll give you my autograph. It, it kind of seems a bit silly. Why would you give your mate your, your autograph? So, yeah, fine for a performing magician who uh, wants an excuse to give away his business card, no problem at all. But I think it does... And I don't, I don't know why you didn't think of this it, it kind of lends itself the fact that you've got a normal card box that you can put a full deck in you can then move into anything else that you want after it uh, and put the box away when you've revealed the actual card now you could put an invisible deck in there now you could say that's too much because if you've revealed the was it three of clubs I think it was there say you'd revealed the three of clubs you could go one step further and tip out the deck of cards put the deck away in your pocket and say um, and um, it's you know, you said the three of clubs, and as well, look, it's the only card that's uh, face up in the. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, face down, face up, whatever. Uh, whether it's um, invisible or brainwave that you're using, uh, actually in the deck. Now you might find that's a bit too much to reveal two cards, but it might be that you've just got another deck of cards or another deck, whether it be gimmicked or not, that you then move on to do an, another effect. Uh, quite quickly afterwards so you take the attention off the box so that's like almost an intro piece leading into something else or maybe you can do something with that card it could be if you said the three of clubs if you've got a full deck in there you could look for the three of clubs and be like looking through looking through and you think it's not there and you go it's really strange three of clubs isn't isn't actually in there and this is where you could use indexed with it in that you could retrieve the three of clubs if that was the case and have, have it appear anywhere you want so it's kind of combining the two tricks together uh, I always look for that with any trick actually in that if something's over quite quickly I like to think well where am I going to go from this now there's nothing wrong with a short trick but I, I like there to be it's, it's probably the because I go out working I want tricks that you know last a certain period of time that have got a bit of a routine to them and um you know that one can be over a little bit quick in that it's like three of clubs boom done oh here's a card done whereas if you can then take the deck out and carry on with the three of clubs and do something else i think it makes it more into a, a performance piece as opposed to just a boom quick moment of magic saying that a lot of people nowadays want just a quick moment of magic maybe a street magician that just hits people quickly with something and walks off 
uh, maybe you're tiktok in or facebook in or instagram in and you want just a quick 30 second video then these kind of tricks are again ideal for that uh, but i personally like to try and make them a bit longer so talking about the actual method itself you see the whole process during uh, the very first performance there in the trailer so you haven't got to watch the whole thing if you just watch closely what he's doing gets the card named when the card is named he picks the deck up off the table he's then holding on to the deck for um, I didn't really time it but maybe five or six seconds and that is long enough to do what he needs to do so when he turns that box round it shows the um, shows the required card now the deck can be uh, let's grab a deck uh, the deck can be held uh, like this through the whole process so that, that this is the position that you would be in uh, I'm doing the required movements on the back of the box now and obviously you can't see anything moving so it looks like I'm just here holding a deck of cards the actual gimmick itself uh, just slots into the cellophane of a normal card box so that's why I mentioned earlier a normal deck of cards or something can go inside it no problem at all and uh, so you can carry on with whatever effect you wanted to if you uh, if you wanted to clean it up, um, it would be possible to put it inside the cellophane of your card box and pop. Uh, it does give you uh, refill, uh, some refill cards with it, and um, it would be possible to remove it from the um, the gimmick. It's I, I think you know we talk about uh, don't run if you're not being chased kind of thing. Um, you could remove the gimmick uh, from it. Uh, but saying that, if you had a blank one in there, it wouldn't have the actual reveal on that they've just said, uh, unless you did actually write it on. Uh, so yeah, that's probably not going to work actually, I'm trying to think of things off the top of my head. But um, the examination of the card box is something that you've got to be aware of. That it's uh, Mark Mason had one, um, I can't remember what it was called now, David John, uh, Fortunate was it? I think it was Fortunate. Uh, which again you could show the box but you couldn't hand the box out for them to look at so this is in the same uh, sort of ilk uh, uh, as that uh, so yeah I'm quite liking what it does as long as you understand the exam examinability uh, point of view and uh, angles as well uh, because you're doing what you need um, with the card box held up in the air it's fine when you've got people stood like this you could uh, kind of cover it to an extent here, but you've got to be able to see the back of the card box yourself to confirm that you've got everything as it should be. So it really is one of those effects where it wants to be people in front of you. So um, the reset, there isn't really a reset uh, other than if you have done the giveaway, getting a refill card and popping it back in so you're ready to pull one out when, uh, when you want to do it again. Uh, personally, I don't think I would use this with a card in there anyway. I think I would just do the reveal, show them what it is, and then immediately tip out the deck and go into another effect. And hopefully by the time you've done that with the effect, that they've kind of forgotten what kind of happened with the card box and it's just one of those memories about what you've just uh, done for them previously. So yeah, that's the uh, effing card by Jota, which um, should be arriving... Well, it may arrive tomorrow, but the tracking's looking a bit weird, so we've put Tuesday just to be on the safe side. So that's the new one from Jota. Or Hota, as he pronounces it. Uh, Tim's saying, could instead of signing the card, you could write Batman on the card, then uh, Digital Force back uh, Batman. Yeah, actually that's uh, not a bad idea, yeah, because uh, you can say I'll just take that out and write something else on there. So yeah, that's a good idea to do a word prediction after it. Yeah, that's uh, it took me a moment just to get my, my brain into what you meant there, Tim, but no, I get what you mean there, so that's not a bad idea. Or you could force Batman however you like, uh, with uh, or any uh, word or character or any, anything that you do with celebrities, you could write that on there as an extra reveal and then go into that effect afterwards. So yeah, not a bad idea. Uh, Graham's asked, uh, I did reply to your message on uh, Facebook, Graham, so uh, while we were watching one of the trailers, because you asked about the Banachet knife effect, uh, so I did 
you want to check your emails actually they're probably going to junk uh, but I did reply to your email today uh, saying that as far as I know the effect hasn't been released uh, and uh, it's quite an old effect so there's videos online of Banachek doing it uh, that's a knife I can't remember what he calls it now knife death uh, knife of death or something like that where he puts knives in envelopes and gets spectators to stab him and uh, the ones that obviously they're stabbing with are not the real knife and at the end the, the real knife is shown uh, to be you know one of the ones that one of the other spectators is, is actually holding but as far as I'm aware I don't think he ever released that unless it was maybe on one of his DVDs or books that he did but I'm not aware that he's released it as uh, an individual effect as such Okay, so we've covered that one. The other one that we wanted to talk about was Orphic. Uh, so let's um, let's get that view back up. So Orphic is the newest one from the 1914. The plus one has sold out at the moment. I've got to get onto Murphy's tomorrow to see if there's any. And they're showing no stock, but I've got to get onto them to see if. Um, there's a possibility of getting any more ready for next week when it's actually released. We've still got the normal Orphic uh, left available. So we'll just go into that one. So there's a picture of it. A bit hard to see there, but you can see it's like a wallet with uh, how many slots? Like three credit card slots on one side. And I understand that a playing card possibly. Um, I'm saying possibly because I've got the instruction link but the instruction link isn't actually live yet so all I've been able to do is watch the trailers when I say trailers our website only actually loads one trailer which is this one here but there is another trailer uh, which actually I can probably find that there is another trailer which um, in fact let me I'll come back to me let me just uh, Down to Murphy's website. And just find it. That's crazy, you would have thought it would have been oh there it is. Let's see if we've got that going. Yep. So let's get this on. So we've got Lewis Laval uh, talking about the Orphic wallet. You get a nice look at it there, as you can see. I'm hoping this is the video that I'm looking at because there's actually two videos on their website. I think Murphy's have uh, messed the images up on the video because this isn't the one that I wanted. So let me just change to this one. Yes, it is. There we go. There's Craig Petty. You can see the, the video I just played on the left has got the Craig thumbnail. In fact, both those thumbnails are from this video. So Murphy's have obviously messed the thumbnails up on their video. Uh, but anyway, here we are. Uh, so Craig's doing a thing with this guy. And you will see, the reason why I'm pointing this out, again, if you watch this video properly, you'll see what's kind of required. This this doesn't show you the peaks, this is kind of the card to wallet kind of thing that uh, it can do. And it's a no palm card to wallet, which is really clever. I haven't watched the instructions to see exactly how they tell you to do it, but if you watch very carefully what Craig's doing, it, you can see what he's doing. And I'm looking forward to watching the instructions because this is the way Craig's handling it. They may well have other ways of doing it, but he's giving them a free choice of playing card that he can pick. And he's getting him to sign the card. And I must admit, there's been a few no cuts, uh, signed no cards to wallets in the past, but none quite as uh, quite as bold or open, almost as this one. Sort of sniggering to myself when I think about the way that they've done this. There has been some in the past where you've kind of loaded things at a certain time when they they think that you're not doing it, uh, but <laughs> this is quite. Um, 
quite clever in that he's uh, like mixing up the cards. <clears throat> and then he's going to end up uh, taking a playing card. Then he thinks he's going to get him to say stop on a random card, which he'll say stop. He says remember that card. Wait for the next bit of the routine so we can see what he's doing. He's then taking another card, uh, putting it in there. He then gives him the wallet. Now, what you just saw Craig do there is what you need to do to be able to do this, which um, I must admit took about sneaky, it's really sneaky. <laughs> and um, we'll wait, uh, wait for the reveal. So the guy, um, so, so the Orphic wallet comes in two sizes. Let me explain that while um, we're getting to the reveal part. It comes, from what I understand, a playing card will still fit in the normal one, but I've got to watch the instructions and see that just to make sure. The, the Orphic Plus is 10 millimeters wider so that a playing card slips in there like without no problem uh, whatsoever. So um, you see that? He says about the four of uh, clubs being the uh, the card that he picked, and then he then talks about uh, the card that was lost in the deck. Maybe they could find that card. Craig doing a little bit of showing off there, one-handed faro shuffle. Very nice. And he makes the card. Disappear. Nice little rubber dub vanish. And then points to the wallet. Asks the guy to. Um, guy takes the wallet back. Guy opens up the wallet, and inside the wallet is the signed card. <coughs> so um, that is um, basically the route, the routine that Craig did there for the Orphit wallet. There's also peaks in it which I can't really comment on because of the um, instruction link not being live. But, you know, looking at the wallet, if you like the handling, you see the handling perfectly in the open. You see it warts and all, actually. If you watch that properly and closely, you'll see how it's handled. You'll see any potential drawbacks or things that could be a problem if you watch that trailer back properly. So it is a very honest, full performance trailer that shows you all the handlings everything that you've got to be careful of, let's say, when you're doing it, watch it back nice and closely. There's nothing hidden there that would take you by surprise. That As long as you watch it properly and understand what's going on, but if you follow what's been go going on during that performance, then uh, you'll know that the Orphic is a very... It, the idea is not brand new. In fact, was it, I think Alan Wong had, uh, had a wallet which um, was... Um, Right, I heard a phone beat then, which um, I haven't got mine with me actually, so it couldn't be mine. Uh, but the Alan Wong had a wallet that did a similar thing, uh, but it wasn't like a proper wallet that like opened up and you can do card to wallet with it. But the concept for what he's doing um, was was shown on that, which uh, was really really cool. So that's the Orfit wallet from 1914. It's very hard when you're doing these things not to. Uh, give away too much information but uh, hopefully that kind of made sense for you. <laughs> Paul says no doubt many so many one of many more. Thing is these new wallets come out and they've always got this I wonder how many new features you can get in a wallet we must be approaching the end of what's possible surely from uh, leather or vegan or whatever type material wallets that they could bring out.
Tim saying what was Craig's reason to put the four of spades into the wallet and then remove it. I can't remember actually. We didn't have the sound on the video there, so uh, just go on to uh, Murphy's website and you can see that see that on there and see the see the full performance. But to save time, I kind of talk over most of the trailers now. Otherwise, the uh, the show here goes on for too long. I try and keep it to an hour if I can which uh, we've been going about 50 minutes so far so I, I like to try and keep it as short and snappy as possible if it goes into hours then people uh, uh, obviously sp have to spend ages uh, flicking through to find bits that they, they uh, want to see as uh, on the website we put the highlights uh, in there uh, so we've talked about all fit the effing card and now we're moving on to the uh, this one let's try to get back to the home page so now we're talking about now there's always people looking for new kids magic magic not just michael uh, the twister vortex magic uh, sharpie dog thing has sold out so hopefully they'll be back in stock because that's been selling very well uh, oh there it is pizza magic there we are so it's only 39.13, so it's not expensive for a kid's trick. Uh, I wouldn't say that the reason why it's so cheap is that when you look at it, it's obviously made of card, so durability could be an issue if you're not the sort of person to look after your props. Uh, but it does look like it's you know made of a reasonably durable card, but I wouldn't exactly say heavy duty. Now, as I normally say with kids' routines, um, You've got to think of a good presentation and a good routine to come with this, uh, to, or to go with this. Um, what he does with it, uh, there is no routine, there is no uh, premise, there is no reason, uh, other than kind of. Uh, and this is what I find a fault with a lot of kids' tricks, is that they're just... Like an adult can look at this and think, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, look, uh, the pizza changes and uh, everything. Yeah, that's great. Um, but, you know... Where's the in this way that he's presenting it? Where is the entertainment? Where is the two-way interaction with the kids? What's the reason for um, producing a pizza? What's uh, you know? So you could say that with a lot of kids' props. In that, in that, the kids' props that I use in my kids' show, the routines that I do with them are nothing like the routines that actually came with them. So, with that prop, I'm not saying it's a bad prop. I'm saying it's a bad routine that you're given with it. And I do think that when people release a piece of magic like he's done there with that, why hasn't he got an absolutely awesome routine that goes with it? And the reason why he's probably not got a good routine with it, he's probably just thought up, uh, and this is the problem with a lot of magic releases nowadays, he's thought up a thing and thought, oh, I can do this thing and we can do it with pizzas. Maybe he's seen a similar one made by somebody else and thought, well, actually, I'll use the same principle and I'll just put, make it into pizzas and it's great, it's going to make me some money next month. Now, I'm not saying someone can't take that trick and do something fantastic with it but um, please you know when they bring out these kids prop and it's been the problems with kids props over the years people come up with these mechanical folding thingies that do whatever they do but the routines are really really lame and I think well it, it kind of proves that they've not really worked these things or if they have they haven't been doing the most entertaining of routines with them so uh, maybe I'm being a little bit harsh but I do feel that really you know when you're doing kids shows you want the kids to interact you want two-way conversations you want it to be funny engaging and um, so yeah if you like the prop and see what it does then yes it does what it does uh, but don't expect to get an amazing routine that comes along with it so that's um, the um, that's the, what was it called pizza pizza magic <laughs> from Gustav rally oh you're already looking at me so If anyone's got, so we're going to do the price drop in a moment. Just look down my list, make sure I've covered everything. Yeah, there wasn't too much to put on the list that I was looking at a highlight for this week. Uh, Darren, I uh, did hear about Nothing 3.0 actually. I must admit, I haven't been in touch with them to find out when it will generally be released. I did see that uh, it was uh, there was a trailer put out about Nothing 3.0, so we are looking forward to seeing that and see what improvements they've made to it. I must get in touch with them actually shortly to get a bit of a lowdown on it because Nothing 2.0 was certainly an excellent seller 
and a very nice little device. So yeah, nothing 3.0 we're hoping has gone one step up from the Nothing 2.0. Uh, Nothing 2.0, for those of you that don't know, was a re remote control uh, smoke device. And it was very small, um, like two thirds of a matchbox in width and about the length of a matchbox long, and it was remote control, so pretty cool. And um, you know, we're looking forward to from the, the trailer that I've seen of Nothing 3.0. Uh, I I'm hazarding a guess that there's going to be saying quite a few, two or three nice little improvements in there, which uh, will be very nice. Oh yeah, Rob uh, is there. Actually mentioned the because he ordered the Sharpie. Um, I can't remember what it was called now. The Sharpie dog uh, that was bent from the bent into the Sharpie bent. And um, when we were talking on the phone about it, we said a good one to. Uh, mix in with this would be the animals where you take a modeling balloon and then uh, give them the little um, like rubbery um, model uh, made, that looks like it's been made out of the balloon <coughs> because when you do the sharpie one it um, especially if you do it for a kid it kind of um, means that you've got to you haven't got to give it away and obviously you wouldn't want to give it away because the sharpie dog one is obviously quite expensive so you could take your sharpie, turn. we were talking about this, take your sharpie, turn it into the dog. Um, obviously you can let them have a look at it and everything and say, but I need my pen and then you can do uh, a switch and make the pen come back. And then after you've done that and you say, well, w would you like a, you know, that wasn't a proper balloon, was it? Would, would you like a balloon? And then you could bring out a balloon, give it to the kiddie ask them to blow their own balloon up which they probably won't be able to do because I can't even blow them up without using a pump and then you can take the balloon and turn it into the little animal and then you can actually give them that one so it's kind of a charming out for the sh Sharpie pen one to um, get you out of trouble for not being able to give that one away it was just that little justification that I came up with to uh, again one effect leading into another which meant that you weren't left with the oh well, they can't have that now you've done this amazing little sharpie dog for me but uh, yes I'm not too sure when you ordered that one Rob so we've got one delivery that's turning up tomorrow and another one which will be tomorrow or Tuesday so the latest if it's on the Tuesday delivery it'll be in be in then uh, righty -hey. Okay, so the price drop for tonight, uh, the price drop is our reverse price auction where we start off on a full priced item then go down in price and um, all you have to do is type sold and the price that I've said as to the price that you want to pay. Uh, if I've moved to a lower price and someone bids a higher price then because of time lags and everything obviously the higher price outbids the person that may have bid at a lower rate. If you're bidding from abroad, then there would be shipping to add to it unless you order another item on the website that includes shipping, and then we can just throw that one in, uh, throw the price drop in with it. Otherwise, in the UK, the shipping is free of charge and uh, included in whatever price uh, the item ends up uh, being. So the price drop for tonight is one of these. Now, the picture there shows both, uh, but we're actually going to be bidding on the full uh, latex vanishing coat bottle. They're normally £24.99. Just about anybody can make use of one of these. These look absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'll just hold it up. Uh, these ones are really, really good. They've got a really nice uh, gloss to them. Uh, a lot of these that I've seen in the past have been very dull. Uh, some of the glass has been a bit kind of bluey, if you know what I mean, where as you can see it looks uh, lovely when I say glass glass in inverted commas uh, but you can see this does look like glass that's probably the best way to say it uh, it does look really really nice you don't get a bottle top so all you've got to add to it for extra because just stand there with a bottle of coat open and then turn it upside down would be a little bit silly <laughs> because in most of the routines that you do uh, with these you put them in a paper bag and then turn it upside down uh, so you want to get yourself a, a take off a, a coke uh, get yourself a prize off coat top uh, flatten it with a bit of dowling or something and clip it back on and then you've uh, got yourself what looks like a bottle of coke you can uh, 
as you can see, and then the, the common way of doing this is that you put it inside a brown paper bag, wave your hands, you've made it disappear, and then at the end of the day you scrunch, uh, scrunch it up, screw up the bag, and toss it away because the bottle of Coke has disappeared. So it's very, very easy to do routine. There is no instructions with it, but I think most people know how to use one of these and have the gags with the uh, paper bag and uh, turning it, uh, putting it in and turning it upside down so it vanished. They say you're holding onto it. You say, no, it hasn't looked, and you go like that and then make it come back again. And then at the end, you screw the bag up. So it's a great interactive piece for kids or for adults. It's a great fun little piece. Uh, £24.99. <laughs> Rob's, you haven't put a price Rob <laughs> it's but sold already um, but um, this one's uh, $24.99 uh, in fact I was talking to Rob about my vanishing coat bottle routine which isn't actually this one um, I'm looking to hopefully um, release my vanishing coat bottle routine and we've got to get Blackpool out of the way it's, it's, uh, we've got lots of projects to come out and in fact we've got a number of things coming out uh, We've got the Back in Time deck uh, coming out um, before Blackpool or at Blackpool. Uh, we've got what I call the Switcher, which will be coming out before Blackpool. We're working on something called Showcase, which is absolutely amazing, which uh, I've been working for um, for quite a while, well, quite a while, probably uh, a little over a month now. But we're, uh, we're having real problems trying to make these the, the, the darn things. Uh, but that's may get out for Blackpool, it may be released after Blackpool and we've got a great trick called Diablo which is amazing as well and that's going to be coming out before Blackpool so my Vanishing Coke bottle routine has taken a bit of a, <laughs> a, step, a step back in the queue um, but uh, the Vanishing Coke bottle oh it's, it's type 24.99 well you get free postage on that Rob so we didn't even get a chance to bid on it uh, Darren's commented there that the uh, Back in Time deck is absolutely awesome Glad you like that. Darren saw that at the Bristol Smoke and Mirrors lecture that uh, I did going back a few months ago and um, I'm really proud of that item. The reason why Darren's got it and it hasn't been out on the website is we, we, we like to t go to Blackpool with things and when we've been doing lectures recently if you are looking for a lecture for your magic club you can have me on my own uh, or myself and Mark Infinity to do a lecture. We've actually found that when we go to do lectures we're having to kind of rush a little bit because when we're having two of us uh, a lot of clubs are limiting us to about an hour and a half and an hour and a half for two people to lecture isn't an awful long time it's like 45 minutes to an hour each at the most so I've got enough material easily to last a couple of hours and Mark Infinity's got his uh, half that can easily last an hour as well so um, you know especially for me you can book me just on my own or you can have uh, both of us and um, uh, Annie Minimals is still available at present um, there's a, there was only a few left at Murphy's actually Wayne I've just seen the comment there so um, but you can still get the um, the refill bags and well again Murphy's I've still got stock so we're kind of still okay but uh, it may have been discontinued with the supply you never know <laughs> and Tony's saying uh, it's a price drop you're supposed to wait to get a discount well he's got free shipping hasn't he on it which normally you'd have to pay more for that to get free shipping so um, yeah there we go the vanishing coat bottle is there for Rob and uh, I'll just put that back in it so I won't bother trying to squeeze it back in the tube uh, but that's the vanishing coat bottle sold before we even started bidding which is excellent so uh, yeah, told you about the new products. I would say, fingers crossed, hopefully Blackpool's going ahead. So thanks for being with me tonight. Look at that, just over an hour. So that's uh, on my uh, target time. So Indexed is uh, out tomorrow. If you've not ordered Indexed yet, every magician has got, um, I'm using Bicycle Seconds box. You, it doesn't even have to stay in a box, but it is better if you put it in a box. Uh, but you get a box and a red deck of bicycle cards with it. Um, and uh, it's all set up, ready to go. It is an amazing utility. I think everyone can find a use for it. And uh, I'm not just saying that because it's ours. Uh, it, it's really proved it with the pre-sale, volume of pre-sales that we've had, which have been overwhelming, as I said at the beginning. So if you've ordered already, thanks very much for your support. If you're looking to order index, then I jump on and get it ASAP. 
because uh, it'll probably be about a week, maybe a little bit longer before we uh, get any more back into stock. So I think the way it's going, it's going to be sold out uh, by tomorrow. So thanks for watching this evening. That's the catch up for this week. And uh, take care, everyone. Uh, stay safe. And I look forward to seeing you next time. So take care, everyone. Bye for now. Thank you.